McCoy at the Ozark Research Institute. And today we're going to be talking about, and hopefully you're gonna learn, how to clear non-beneficial energies from your home and from your business and from your property. And it's going to be a simple, easy, inexpensive way of doing it without spending all that money to do it like so many of the, the uh, techniques are. Um, first, I'd like to tell you how I learned this technique. Um, many years ago, uh, to me it's many years ago, back in the late 80s and early 90s, um, I was new to dowsing and to uh, being a part of this group of people. And um, I went to Danville, Vermont to um, the National Convention. And at the convention, there was a man that was going to speak about uh, clearing energy and his name was Jim Perkins. Jim happened to be the president of the American Society of Dowsers at that time. And so one of my friends who was a trustee had decided she was gonna to go to the talk and hear him. So I said, well, I'll just go along with you. And so I went with her and he gave this talk that just set me on fire. I thought, whoa, this is the most amazing thing I've ever heard. And I just had to know more and more and more about this. But he worked for the Ohio Highway Department and he and a buddy of his decided that they were going to go out one day and fix the areas on the road um, where they'd had accident after accident repetitively in the same places. Now, we, if we all think about it, we're going to think, oh yeah, I remember there's so-and-so at this spot, they have several accidents there a year. Well, they assume that it had something to do with the pitch of the road or, you know, the curve wasn't exactly right. Uh, there was too much obstruction from the shrubs or whatever, but they had the full intention of fixing this issue. Intention. Okay. And one of them was driving the truck. The other one had the map in his, in his lap of the area. And as they would come across one of these places, the other one would make these three marks on the map with the intention they were going to go back and fix it. So they spent the day out in the field driving around. And then they went back to the highway department when the day was over or their little chore was over and they put the maps away. And they never did go out and fix these areas. They, and the accident stopped happening. So they had no reason to go out and stop and fix these areas. Several years down the road, the highway department was moved. And he told the story that the maps were destroyed and the accidents started happening again in those same areas again. And I thought, whoa, this is so exciting. I've got to know how that works. And I kept going to all the meetings and listening and no one was talking about this. So I decided it, the, the occasion arose for me to try this and I did. Now, it just so happened that he was using a blue ink pen when they made the marks on the map. So I call this the blue ink method because I use blue ink to block these energies. Now, one of the things about doing this work is we have to clarify our belief system. Now my belief system is that if I give these non-beneficial energies a name, then I give them power. And what is a non-beneficial energy? A non-beneficial energy could be geopathic. It could be uh, electromagnetic. It could be um, a neighbor that lives next door to you. 
Um, it could be your house that you're trying to sell won't sell. Um, anything that is harming anyone or anything that's living in that space is a non-beneficial energy. Now, energy is just energy. It's neither good or bad. It is how we receive it or how we perceive it that makes it one way or the other. Uh, the same energy that's beneficial to me could be very non-beneficial to you. So, that is clarifying your belief system. And if you can clump all of these things together, geopathic, electromagnetic, a house that won't sell, a neighbor that's really a pain, um, you know, all in one little ball, then that is clarifying your belief system and setting your intention. Intention. It's a great big word, guys. Our intention today is going to be to clear a house. But before we start doing that, we have to know how to use a pendulum. Now, if you don't know how to use a pendulum, I ask that you bring one with you today. But all you have to do is just know for sure that your yes response is going to be in one direction and it is always in that direction. Now, my yes response is always just like I shake my head. Yes. Okay? And that's all I need. I don't need a no. I don't need anything else. I get my pendulum swinging in the ready and I say, give me a yes response. And it automatically goes into my yes. So practice with that while I continue to talk for a little while. So you know that you're going to have yes responses. So the first thing we have to do is, of course, have a foundation shape drawing of the house. I have never worked with topo maps or uh, the plans, you know, the house plans of a house. I prefer to have a hand sketch drawing of the property or of the foundation shape of the house, general shape of the house. Um, doesn't have to be precise, but if it's a square, draw a square. If it's a rectangle, draw a rectangle. But if it has a little add-on, draw that on. So, because your energy is really important if I'm doing the work for you, but this is how I do it. And I think your energy is on there when we do that. So the first thing we do is get our little map with the address on it. Now we used to do the direction of north, so it oriented us. But when you put an address on this flat piece of paper, that becomes that house. It's just that simple. You date it. It's important that you douse in the now. And it's really important that you get permission. I always ask permission. I always ask, may I douse 221 somewhere USA for any non-beneficial energies that are harming anyone or anything living in this space? And if I get a yes, then I say, can I douse 221 somewhere USA for any non-beneficial energies harming anyone or anything living in that space. And I get a yes. Then I ask, should I? Should I douse 221 somewhere USA for any non-beneficial energies harming anyone or anything living in that space? And if I get a yes to all three of those questions, then I proceed with my dowsing work. And it's as simple as this, guys. Don't make it hard. If you're dowsing an apartment, just your apartment shape, your apartment, not the whole complex, just yours, okay? Um, that could be another non-beneficial energy. If your neighbor has his TV on the wall next to your head or next to your 
favorite place to sit in the living room, um, you know, that's a non-beneficial energy because it's going to bleed through and you're going to get it. So this is 221 Somewhere USA. I got permission today to douse for that. And this is all you have to do. Is swing your pendulum in the ready and then go to one corner and ask. Give me a yes response when I come to a place where there's any non-beneficial energies entering this space that is harming anyone or anything living there. Entering, remember that, where it is entering. So I'm gonna walk along that foundation shape and I got a yes right here. So I'm going to mark that spot. And I'm going to continue to go along, same question. When I get a yes, I'm going to make another mark. Same question. We move kind of fast. We don't go very slow because sometimes these areas are very long, uh, very wide, and um, we don't want to pick up on one that was already there or the same one. So we move quickly. All right. Now then, another oddity about this is very seldom do I find an even number of non-beneficial energies that are entering a space. It seems to be an odd number every time. So I have found seven non-beneficial energies that are entering this space. Now there could still be some stuff on the inside of this space, okay? But we're gonna take care of that too. And remember, we're not identifying because if there's any ghosts or any little entities or any mold or any toxic things that are growing on the wall or formaldehyde in the carpet or whatever, um, we will take care of that when we get in here, okay? So this is as easy as it gets, guys. Blue ink. This is called engineer blue, and this is all you have to do. It is coming this way, so we do this three little marks like that. It's like a little horseshoe, only three horseshoes, or use whatever you wanna call it. We don't care where it exits. All we care about is stopping it from entering this space. So, I have blocked that energy from entering 221 South, somewhere USA. Now I'm gonna put my hand on this map and I'm going to say, I have found seven non-beneficial energies that are entering this space and I have cleared them. Is that all there is? And I got a yes. So that means that there's nothing inside of this one. There's no um, toxic stuff inside the house, okay? So we're gonna ask that it all be removed at this time. And the pendulum will swing and swing and swing in the, count, in the counterclockwise because that's how we take things out. And we just let the pendulum swing, clearing all non-beneficial energies from this space. And when it's slowing down now, and when it stops and goes back to my ready, 
that's when I put the good stuff in. When you create a void, which we did by removing this non-beneficial energy, then we have to put positive energy back in right away because we don't want to leave a void for something else to jump in. So we just ask that. And this is when I kind of drop into a state of meditation and I ask spirit to help me with this. And I ask for things that are going to be beneficial for these people as it puts good, positive energy in this space. This space is, clear, is filled with light and love and hope, harmony, goodness and light. I'll, sometimes I'll come up with self-esteem, um, good I have come up with things like um, everyone that lives in this space is, is um, willing to be cooperative um, and things like that. And I never know what's going to come to my mind, but I say it. I speak the words. And when it slows and goes back to my ready again, then I know that that energy has stopped and this space is clean and clear and positive. Only positive energy is left in that space for those people. Now, as I said, this is where the energy is entering, okay? Right here, right here, right here, right here. This way, that way, that way. It comes from all different directions. But if it's coming from this direction, this is the way you make your, pen, your, your marks, okay? So that if something is there and this one doesn't catch it, this one's going to catch it, or this one's going to catch it. Now, it used to go the other way around when I first learned it, but I always thought if it was coming this way, it could hit here, and I could just slide off and just keep going. So I turned it around. Now, as I said before, this same energy that's coming this way, your neighbors may be over here, and this energy may benefit them greatly, but it is not beneficial for somebody in this space. And if there's some kind of this energy flowing on the ground level, without a doubt, there will be um, an illness. There can be plants that don't survive growing right here or right here. Um, you replant them and they still die, whatever. Um, it's non-beneficial to many things. Cats seem to like this kind of agitated energy. As, um, uh, wasps, um, bees, a lot of beekeepers who are aware of this will place their beehives on this type of energy because it activates the hive and they make more honey so um now like i said if you have a bad neighbor living over here or whatever um then you would clear this but not with the intention that they move necessarily um but if you put if you put positive energy in a space negativity will either change or it will leave and that has happened many, many times. Um, now I have directed it, the positive energy to the neighbors if we knew that was what was going on so that they would move on and leave the space, space harmoniously or whatever. Um, but I've done thousands of these things since I learned to do it. I know it works. I know it's beneficial. And one of the things that I didn't tell you was when I get through verbalizing my prayer, my affirmation for that person, I write it. And I always write it uh, <clears throat> out like this. I write my, my affirmation, whatever words I can remember that I got when I was doing it. But I always sign my affirmations. Om, A-U-N, the old Sanskrit way of writing Om. And I put my name on 
that prayer, that affirmation, because I feel like I have made a contract for the people that I worked for. If I got permission and I wrote the affirmation for them or the prayer and I signed it, it's done. It's a done deal. I know it's going to be beneficial for them. So that's what I do when I do it. And I've got a couple of them here. This one I did. I don't know if, if we can capture that, can we? There were several this way. Okay. Can you see it? I can't see you now. <laughs> okay. Anyway, just let me read it. This one had three, uh, five, six. It had had seven on it, too. Um, and this is what I wrote. I ask that this house is filled with peace, love, hope, harmony, kindness, and understanding. Good health for all. Prosperity is abundant. The, li the lives of everyone here are richly blessed by the love of God and all that is good and perfect in their lives. And I always write, so shall it be with all praise, Om Gladys. Well, I got a phone call from these people shortly afterwards. And she said, the house was very peaceful after I had done the clearing. She had a visitor who stayed a few extra days because of the peacefulness. Um, she had a, a blood test oh, for, this lady was sick. She had, um, um, had leukemia. Um, and the first time after a year's time after I did the clearing, um, there were no changes to her blood work, which was a wonderful thing. Um, it wasn't worse, like they had expected it to be. So things, you can make a difference with this, health-wise, um, with um, the energy that's in the house. I had one house in New York that I worked on, had several children. The children would not sleep in their home, in their bedrooms. They slept in their mother and father's room. They had a wonderful backyard, lots of things for the kids to play on. The kids wouldn't go outside and play. So I cleared that whole piece of property. And this, and it, it had several, several. One, two, that's five, eight, nine, 10, 11. It had 14 non-beneficial energies in it. No, 13, excuse me. And this is the affirmation I wrote for them. I ask that this house is filled with peace, love, joy, good help. It is a happy place with light surrounding it for protection and all who are there are healthy and happy. And of course, so shall it be. Now, this family had light bulbs that were going off and on. Um, they would, would blow out uh, repetitively. Um, and like I said, the kids wouldn't play outside. They slept in their mom and dad's room and um, they were going to move out of this lovely home and find someplace else to live. And um, as far as I know, they're still in this beautiful house that they had with their rabbits and all the other things that they had around there. So you can make a difference. Now, I always keep these diagrams that I do for other people. And the reason I keep them is because sometimes they call me and tell me something else has come up and could I check with it and um, see, you know, what else is going on um, because they felt like something had come back in. And indeed, uh, things can come back in. This energy will not come back, but the earth could shift and something new could come. You could bring something into the house that would change the energy inside the house. So if that happens, then I can go back and I can rework on this uh, diagram. Now, should be one time, but if you have to do it a second time, fine. Now, I believe now that 
you can do the work and you could burn that paper that you did the work on with the intention that all that good energy you put in there is just gonna go out to the ethers and continue. And I think it will. Um, but like I said, I keep mine. And I have a lot of these in my file, guys. So, it works, give it a try. If you want some more information on it, give me a call. Uh, we'll talk. And I hope that you'll try it because I know it works. And it doesn't cost hardly anything. A piece of paper and a blue pen. And as you can see, I like blue. Uh, blue is a very, this blue is a very powerful color and it is a protective color. So we have this all protected. Now, you do not want to just make lines all the way around here, three lines or whatever, and close it all in because if you do that, there may still be something in here that you want out. So don't make just solid lines all the way around. Remember to move your hand very quickly um, so that you don't pick up on the same energy every time um, and just clear them with the, with the use if you get permission to do so. Uh, always get permission. It's very important. And I hope you have a lot of fun with it. I hope that someday, um, soon, that we'll all be able to gather again together and you can come to ORI and have a class with me. In person, I will also teach you how to do a body. It's lots of fun. Bye, guys.